In a world shrouded in mystery and secrets, where the unknown lurks just beyond the edge of our understanding, a revelation of cosmic proportions has sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Baylor University researchers have uncovered something massive and metallic beneath the moon's surface, specifically in the 1,240 mile wide and 4 billion year old South Polakin SBA basin. This discovery is not only baffling but also potentially groundbreaking, offering insights into the formation of rocky bodies, including our own planet. Imagine burying an amount of metal five times larger than the big island of Hawaii underground. That's roughly the amount of unexpected mass discovered. But what caused this 4.8 quintillion pound increase? What is it made of exactly? Let's find out. It has been 53 years since the first human walked on the moon. Our understanding of our planet's nearest neighbor has advanced significantly, and so has our passion for it. Researchers have uncovered something enormous lying beneath the far side of the moon, an unexplained blob of metal the size of five times the big island of Hawaii. The geophysical research letters recently described the structure, located at least 180 miles below the South Polakin Basin, a massive crater carved into the lunar landscape billions of years ago. This discovery was made possible using data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, GRAIL, mission and topography from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO. The GRAIL mission and the LRO provided new insights into the moon's interior, allowing researchers to refine previous calculations for the thickness of the crater's crust and the density of the mantle. This new information revealed an unusual surplus of mass in the mantle, suggesting a massive metallic structure beneath the surface. The data paints a hazy picture of what's going on both above and below the ground. Gravity is stronger when there is more mass, such as higher topography or denser rocks. These maps show a clear distinction between the SBA basin and most of the moon's other large craters. Mass concentrations, or mass cons, discovered by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in 1968, appear in gravity maps as a core circle of high gravity surrounded by a ring of weak gravity and then another ring of stronger gravity. This phenomenon occurs due to how the low-density crust and high-density mantle adjust following a collision. However, there is no comparable trend in the SBA basin. To uncover what was happening beneath the surface, scientists used mathematics to create a model that more accurately reflected the natural system based on new assumptions about the forces at work. The result revealed a vast zone of dense material within the upper mantle of the moon. So, what could this subsurface bulk be? There are two main theories. First, it could be a residue of dense oxides that developed during the last phase of cooling when ancient lava oceans covered the moon. However, researchers don't have a mechanism to explain how such a layer formed, particularly beneath the basin. The second theory suggests that the mass could have come from an ancient impactor. When the SBA basin was formed, the space rock that created it was likely large enough to divide into layers, resulting in a dense metallic core and rocky outer layers, similar to many of today's planets. The impact energy produced a deep, bowl-shaped crater on the moon, with the impactor's metallic core smashing up inside. While the extra mass is invisible on the surface, it appears to be having a significant impact, pushing the lunar terrain down into a strange, 
Avoid depression that lies more than half a mile lower than the surrounding crater floor. This phenomenon is known as the central depression. It was also discovered that previous estimates of the crater's inner rim size were significantly off. This information could be critical as NASA and others plan missions to the basin and the nearby south pole of the moon. The Clementine mission, which had a gap near the basin's southern end, was used by previous researchers to determine these boundaries. However, new research using data from the LRO and GRAIL shows that the crater is about 40 miles larger than previously estimated. This study adds to the growing sense of intrigue surrounding the South Polakin Basin. According to Sarah Masroyai of Western University's Center for Planetary Science and Exploration, who is not part of the research, it's just so mysterious. By improving our understanding of this structure, scientists hope to better understand the formation of bodies throughout our celestial family. Every planet in our solar system originated from small objects colliding and gradually producing larger things. Plate tectonics on Earth have slowly destroyed the planet's ancient surface and its record of early impacts. The Moon, on the other hand, with its billion-year-old surface, provides a remarkable record of what happened when our solar system was young including the spectacular events that generated one of the largest known impact basins in our cosmic neighborhood. The unusual mass finding adds to the mystery, especially because the crater and the neighboring lunar south pole are both prospective targets for future moon missions. The mass has already piqued the interest of scientists, Investigating this phenomenon could shed light on the history of the crater's formation and help us better understand how our moon and other celestial bodies expand over time. Meanwhile, China's U-2 2 mission has made another fascinating discovery on the moon's far side. The rover's panoramic camera picked out two small complete orbs of clear glass glistening among the dry gray dust. These spherules can store data about the moon's past, such as the makeup of its mantle and impact occurrences. Although U2, 2 was unable to gather compositional data, these natural lunar marbles may prove to be valuable research targets in the future. As it turns out, glass isn't rare on the moon. When silicate material is heated to a high temperature, the substance develops, and both of these constituents are abundantly available on the moon. There was widespread volcanism in the lunar past, which resulted in the development of volcanic glass. Collisions from smaller objects like meteorites also formed glass. According to a team of scientists led by planetary geologist Jiong Shao of Sun Yat-sen University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the latter could be the cause of the spherules seen by U2. 2. Since most of the glass found on the moon so far appears to be different from that recovered by U2, 2. It is difficult to say for sure. Some of the spherules are smaller than a millimeter in diameter. During an impact on Earth, such tiny glass spherules are formed, generating such intense heat that the crust melts and sprays into the atmosphere. The molten substance cools and condenses into tiny glass beads. The spherules discovered by U2, two are substantially larger measuring 15 to 25 millimeters across. Glass balls up to 40 millimeters across were found on the moon's near side during the Apollo 16 mission, but that doesn't make them unique. These have been linked to a nearby crater and are likewise likely to be impact spirals. However, there are some notable variations between the two findings. According to Xiao and his colleagues, 
The far side spherules appear to be translucent or semi-transparent and have a vitreous sheen. They discovered four other spherules with a similar shine, but their translucency could not be confirmed, in addition to the two that appear to be translucent. It is possible that these spherules developed during lunar meteorite impacts, but it's also possible that they were previously existing buried beneath the surface and were only excavated by impacts. The researchers suggest that the most likely explanation is that they formed from anorthosites, a volcanic glass that melted on contact and reformed as translucent round blobs. The unique morphology, geometry, and local context of these glass globules are compatible with being anorthositic impact glasses. This might turn the objects into lunar versions of terrestrial tectites, which are pebble-sized glassy objects formed when Earth material melts, sprays into the air, and then hardens and shapes into a ball as it falls back down, much like those tiny spherules. If these are lunar tectites, they may be widespread on the moon's surface. We won't know for sure until we examine their composition. The team believes this opens up exciting new avenues of investigation in the future. Some scientists believe that the spheres were created long ago during volcanic eruptions on the moon and that they were dug up by a recent meteorite crash, melted, and reformed into translucent blobs again. If these are lunar tectites, they may be widespread on the moon's surface. We won't know for sure until we examine their composition. The team believes this opens up exciting new avenues of investigation in the future. Some scientists believe that the spheres were created long ago during volcanic eruptions on the moon and that they were dug up by a recent meteorite crash, melted, and reformed into translucent blobs again. If the theory is correct, there will likely be many more similar spheres on the lunar surface, the composition of which can be investigated to learn more about the moon's past. If that's the case, the Chinese have plenty of experience transporting samples from the moon back to Earth. In the meantime, attempts to get people back to the moon are soaring. According to NASA, the next opportunity to land American astronauts on the moon will be in 2024. Perhaps we'll get a better glimpse at the moon's massive metallic and glass mystery. The discoveries made in the South Pole Aiken Basin and the far side of the moon are not just scientific curiosities, they have broader implications for our understanding of the moon's geological history and the history of the solar system. The SBA Basin, being one of the largest impact craters in the solar system, provides a unique window into the processes that shaped the early solar system. Studying the mass anomaly in the SBA Basin could reveal new information about the moon's internal structure, the nature of large impact events, and the history of lunar volcanism. Moreover, these discoveries underscore the importance of continued lunar exploration. The moon serves as a natural laboratory for studying planetary processes that are otherwise obscured by geological activity on Earth. By understanding the moon's geological history, scientists can draw parallels to other rocky bodies in the solar system, including Mars and even Earth itself. The data collected from missions like GRAIL, LRO, and U2 Two are crucial for developing models of planetary formation and evolution. Future missions to the moon, such as NASA's Artemis program and China's Lunar Exploration program, will build on these discoveries. The Artemis program aims to return humans to the moon by 2024, with a focus on the lunar South Pole region. 
This area is of particular interest because it contains permanently shadowed regions that may harbor water ice, a valuable resource for future lunar missions. Water ice can be used for life support, radiation shielding, and even as a source of fuel for rockets. China's Lunar Exploration Program, which includes the Chang'e missions, has already achieved significant milestones, such as the first landing on the moon's far side and the return of lunar samples to Earth. These missions are paving the way for more ambitious endeavors, such as establishing a lunar research station and eventually sending humans to the moon. International collaboration will be essential for the success of these missions. The challenges of lunar exploration are immense, and pooling resources and expertise from different countries can accelerate scientific progress. Collaborative efforts, such as the Lunar Gateway Project, a planned space station in lunar orbit involving NASA, ESA, JAXA, and CSA, will provide a platform for sustainable lunar exploration and research. The Moon will also play a critical role in humanity's broader goals for space exploration. As a stepping stone to Mars and beyond, the Moon offers an opportunity to develop and test technologies needed for long-duration space missions. The experience gained from living and working on the Moon will be invaluable for future missions to Mars, where the challenges will be even greater due to the planet's distance from Earth and harsher environment. The Moon's resources, such as water, ice, and regolith, can be used to support human presence and reduce reliance on supplies from Earth. In-situ resource utilization, ISRU, technologies will enable astronauts to extract and use these resources, paving the way for sustainable exploration. The development of lunar habitats, power systems, and life support technologies will also be critical for establishing a permanent human presence on the Moon. The significance of these discoveries extends beyond the Moon. By understanding the processes that shaped the Moon, we gain insights into the broader processes that shaped the solar system. The study of large impact basins, for example, can reveal information about the frequency and scale of impact events in the early solar system, which in turn has implications for understanding the history of other planets, including Earth. Similarly, the study of lunar glass spherules can provide information about the conditions and processes that produced them, which can be compared to similar processes on Earth and other planets. As we prepare to return to the Moon and explore its mysteries, we are reminded of the importance of curiosity, innovation, and international collaboration in our quest to unlock the secrets of the universe. The Moon's mysteries are far from being fully understood, and with each new mission, we get closer to uncovering the truths hidden in its ancient, silent surface. The future of lunar exploration is bright, and the discoveries we make on the Moon will undoubtedly shape our understanding of the solar system and our place in it for generations to come.